So in calculus, you've already learned how to find the derivative. Now we're transitioning to finding the antiderivative using the reverse power rule. So let's say we start with a function like, like 3x squared plus 8. So we take the derivative of that. We can use the power rule here, so we get 6x and then just 6x because we know that the derivative of any constant is just 0. So when we took the derivative, we went from 3x squared plus 8 down to 6x. When we find the antiderivative, we're basically just reversing this process. So in other words, we're going from 6x back up to 3x squared, right? And the way we write this antiderivative, or integral, we might call it, we write the 6x, we write this symbol with the dx at the end. So this notation, when we find the antiderivative, it's not really important that you know what this means. You'll understand later on, but right now, it's not really important. So anyway, we're basically just reversing this process. We go from 6x back to 3x squared plus 8. So our answer, you might think, is 3x squared plus 8. What we're missing here is that once we took the derivative of 3x squared plus some constant, right? So this 8, this 8 could have been any number, right? It could have been 1, 2, 3, right? Up to 1,000. It could have been any constant and the derivative would have still been 0. So if we just write in a c for a constant here, we can see that the, the antiderivative of 6x is going to be 3x squared plus this constant. So instead of writing plus 8, it'll actually be, it'll actually be a plus c. So there's our antiderivative. So now you need to actually know how to find this antiderivative. If we have any function in the ax to the n power form, let's just say we have 3x to the fourth. If you want to find the derivative, normally what we do is take this power to the front of the coefficient and multiply it, then subtract 1 from the power. So what we get is 4 times 3x cubed, or 12 x cubed. So the steps there were move the power to the coefficient then subtract 1 from the power, right? If we want to find the antiderivative, we just do that process backwards. So if we start with 12x cubed, the second step was to subtract 1 from the power. So what we'll do now is add 1 to the power. So this will be a 4. Then our first step to finding the derivative was moving the power to the coefficient. So now what we'll do is move the coefficient to the power, or in other words, we'll divide the coefficient by the power, right? So now we're left with 12 over 4 x to the fourth. And this turns into a 3, so we're left with 3x to the fourth power. And that's how you find the antiderivative using the reverse power rule. Now let's go over some examples of using the reverse power rule. In our first problem, we're asked to find the antiderivative of 3x squared. So like in our explanation, we'll cross out this 2 and add 1. So that becomes 3. Then divide by the power that we have left over. Then these 3's cancel out. And we're left with x cubed. And we also have to remember to add the plus c at the end to account for the constant. For our next problem, we're given two terms. So just like when we find the derivative, what we can actually do is just split these apart. So the antiderivative of 4x dx plus the antiderivative of 5 dx. So we can work out these one at a time. 
So the antiderivative of 4x, this will just be 4x to the first power, actually. So we do cross out the 1, add 1, so we get 2. We divide the coefficient by the power, and we get 2x squared for our first term. Then for our second term, this 5 is actually a 5x to the 0th power, right? because um, x to the 0th power is just 1. So if we add 1 to the power, we get x to the 1st. Then we divide by 1. We're just left with 5x. So the antiderivative of any constant is just going to be that constant times x. And don't forget to add the c, and there is our answer. For the third problem, we can still use the reverse power rule we just have to first turn this 4x cubed into a negative power. So we can do that right here. The antiderivative of 4x to the negative third power dx. And we do the same thing. We add 1 to the power, so we get negative 2 instead of negative 3. And we divide by negative 2, and we get negative 2 x to the negative 2 power plus c. If we want, we can leave it like this. Um, but sometimes I like to make it in this form. But on AP tests, either of these answers are acceptable. For our last problem, we have the antiderivative of x squared, or uh, excuse me, the square root of x, which we can rewrite as the antiderivative of x to the 1 half power. So we just do the same thing. Add 1 to 1 half, and we get 3 halves. And this time, we have to divide by 3 halves. Um, and in other words, we can just do that by multiplying by its reciprocal, which is just 2 thirds. So we're left with 2 thirds x to 3 halves power plus c. And we can just leave it in that form. If we want to double check our work, we know that the antiderivative is just the opposite of the derivative. So we can just take the derivative of our answer. If you have any questions, you can leave them in the comments. But the next video will be on the fundamental theorem of calculus.